Hey, this is the Black Belt Panda, and welcome back to the Redstone Bunker. In this episode, we're going to build a waste disposal system. So to understand how the waste disposal system works, we're going to quickly cover how comparators work. Comparators have three basic functions. They can compare, they can subtract, and they can read the contents of an inventory behind them. So the back of the comparator is this side here with the two torches, and the front is this side here with the single torch. It's pretty simple because it looks like an arrow. But you might also notice these little arrows on the sides. Those are inputs into the comparator. So as you can see, we've got some redstone dust running into this side here, and we're going to see how this works in compare mode. So right now it's in compare mode. You can tell because the front torch is off. So in compare mode, if I press uh, F3 here to pull up the debug screen, if you look at the right side, when I look at some redstone, you'll see uh, third line up from the bottom, power 15. So we can see the signal strength of the redstone. 15 is full power. That is full power redstone, maximum strength. Over here, we have a power level of zero, inactive redstone. So with nothing coming into the side, so this is zero, uh, or we can even get rid of that, doesn't matter. Uh, the comparator will output the same signal strength it receives. So it's receiving 15, it's outputting 15. If I move this torch back one, boom, so that's now 15, so that's now 14. The signal goes down one for every block. So now it'll output a signal strength of 14 because that's what's coming in from the back. Very simple. If, however, let me put this back in the front, we power it from the side. So here we have a signal strength of 13 coming in from the side. What it's comparing here is the strength coming in from the side with the strength coming in from the back. If the side is lower, in this case it is because this is 13, this is 15, then it will output the same signal strength coming in from the back. However, if the side is higher let me do that here so here we have 15 coming in from the side if that's higher than what's coming in from the back which is now 14 then it will not output a redstone signal at all that is compare mode in subtract mode we have a slightly different function what it will do is it will take the input from the side and subtract it from the input from the back so in the back we have 14 in the side we have 15 14 minus 15 is negative 1, and it doesn't do negative, so it just outputs 0. If we put this back here, and then put this back here, now we have 15 coming in from the back and 14 coming in from the side. So now it's going to subtract 14 from the side from 15 in the back, and of course 15 minus 14 is 1, so it outputs a signal strength of 1. If I move this further back, we now have 13 coming in from the side. 15 minus 13 is 2, so it outputs a signal strength of 2. This is 1, and now this is 0. So as you can see, 2. Very simple. So that is how the compare and subtract modes work. So we're going to use those to create a redstone clock. A redstone clock is, of course, just redstone that turns on and off at regular intervals. Over here, we have a very basic comparator clock. Right now, it is turned off. This uses subtract mode to create a clock simply by updating every tick uh, the amount coming in from the side and what's coming in from the back. Here we have 15 coming in from the back. Here we have 15 going out the front because, again, it takes what's coming in from the back, outputs it out the front. So this is 14, and then this becomes 13. So now it has 13 going into the side. So 15 minus 13 is 2. So when we put this into subtract mode, what it's going to do is then output a signal strength of 2 because 15 minus 13 is 2. Then this becomes 1 and this becomes 0, at which point this updates again and says, oh, I've got 0 coming in from the side, 15 coming out in from the back, so let's output 15. So this becomes 15 again. And then... 14, 13, subtracts again, and it does this over and over and over every tick. So I will demonstrate here. Turn it on by right clicking. It's now in subtract mode, and we can see the redstone turning on and off. If you look at the power level on the right again, you'll actually see it alternating between 15 and 2. Here, 14 and 1, and here, 13 and 0, just like I had stated. So this is a very basic comparator clock using the subtract mode of the comparator. It is compact, and it is fast. Of course, you don't always want a fast clock. Sometimes you want a slower clock or to be able to control the speed of it a little bit. We can use repeaters for this. If we place a repeater here and a repeater here with redstone here and here, it's basically doing the same thing now, 
So this is alternating between 15 and zero instead of 13 and zero because this repeater uh, outputs maximum signal strength no matter what comes in from the back as long as it's at least one. So this alternates much slower because each of these repeaters adds a one tick delay. We can also slow it down further by increasing the delay on the repeaters. So if we set them both to the maximum delay here, we can see we've got a much slower redstone clock. Very nice. The repeaters also serve a, another nice function. Right now we have a full strength signal coming in from the back, but sometimes that's not always the case. If we have a much weaker signal, let's say uh, a signal strength of one. So if we say 14, 13, 12, 11, All right, so that should be a signal strength of one. As you can see, it still functions with a signal strength of one. If those repeaters were not there, it would not function because it outputs a signal strength of one, and then this is zero and zero. As you can see, it, it, it doesn't work because one minus zero is one, and that's, that's as far as it goes. It never goes any further, but using repeaters, boom. That is now, whoops, a signal strength of 15, because as long as the signal strength coming into the repeater is one, it will output 15. And with this uh, two repeater system here for the clock, we can now create a clock with a smaller input along the back, such as from uh, just a single item in the container behind it. Speaking of containers, let's quickly go over the container reading feature here. So these comparators, they have a cool function here. If I toss a single item in there, it's gonna output a power of one. But if I toss a bunch of items in there, that power goes up, now it's at five. And of course, with a full chest, it's going to output a power of 15. So it's relative to the size of the inventory. If I put another chest here, um, I think, will it just read? Let's see. There we go, power of eight. So we've got pretty much half of the double chest. So because we increased the size of the inventory, the signal strength went down. But if I fill the double chest, we're back up to 15 again. So pretty basic. Uh, we can use all these features of the comparator over here. Put that back there. All right, over here with the waste disposal system. So the way this works is pretty simple. We have a trap chest above a hopper pointing into a dropper, which points down at a block of lava. And we have our clock back here reading out of the dropper. So let's go over that. The hopper uh, will pull items out of the chest above it and insert them into the dropper. Now hoppers, when they receive a redstone signal, will not transfer any items. It won't pull any items out of the chest and it won't put any items in the dropper. This is a trapped chest, which means when I open it, and while it's open, it's emitting a redstone signal. In other words, while this chest is open and I'm looking at its contents, this hopper will not transfer anything. So let's take a look at that. If I toss a piece of redstone in here, it doesn't go down into the hopper because we have the chest open. This is very handy for a garbage system or a waste disposal system because you could toss a couple items in and be like, whoa, hey, I, I didn't want to get rid of that redstone. And then you can take it back, as long as you do it before you close the chest. Because once you close the chest, item's gone. Look at that. All right, so hopper inserts the item into this dropper. As long as there is an item in this dropper, this comparator will output a signal, and this repeater will pick it up, amplify it over to this repeater, which outputs 15 back into the side of this comparator. This is just that same clock we just went over, but I added a piece of redstone right up here on this block. This redstone is going to power the block under it, which is going to indirectly power this dropper. That means that every time this clock emits a redstone pulse, this dropper will activate, dropping one item down into that lava block. Why are we using a lava block? Well, if we use an empty space and we have a ton of items in here and they're all getting dropped down into that empty space, they still exist in the world as item entities and that can cause some lag. Lava, however, will destroy any item entities that enter it. So by dropping the items straight down to lava, they get destroyed and we don't have to worry about creating any lag from having a massive amount of items sitting in one block. So let's go ahead and demonstrate it. I'll toss some items in here. Let's toss a stack of sandstone. And when we close it, it'll start depositing it. Now, if we open the chest, it'll stop. So that, that's a neat feature. Could be handy. I don't know. But anyway, 
So now you can see the items are going into the dropper. The clock is activating because there's items in the dropper and it is dropping those items one at a time down into the lava below every time the clock emits a redstone pulse. Very, very simple. Let's go ahead and remove those. How many do we have in here? Now we can see the items going down as it drops one at a time and essentially deletes them for us. Very useful. And of course we have space on this side of the dropper if we ever wanted to add another hopper for maybe you know uh, item transport system where you've got items coming along a pipe you got a bunch of garbage items you don't want to keep they go in here and they're gone right very simple so let's go build it and here we are in the redstone bunker i'm gonna go ahead and put the waste disposal system on this wall here because it's close to what we've got done so far and that's always pretty handy to not have to go very far to do stuff right so i'm going to put it right in the center here the chest is going to occupy this block so i'm going to break out an area through here let's say four blocks in so that's one two three and four and put a torch on the back right all right so like I said, the chest is going to go here, which means the hopper is going to go here, the dropper is going to go here, and the lava is going to go here. The first thing we're going to want to do is place our dropper in. So I'm going to break down one more block, look up here, and right click to place it. I'm going to break out here, alright, and I need to replace that block so our lava is going to go here. I'm going to come up this way, go ahead and put the lava in, and then cover this left side up here. And now we can place our hopper facing the dropper just by sneaking and right clicking that dropper. Place our trap chest on top again by sneaking and right clicking on the hopper. Now we can pull the inventory content signal out with the comparator. Place a repeater in front of that facing that direction. Place another repeater over here facing that direction. And we can connect the repeaters with redstone and connect those to the comparator. Put it in subtract mode, creating our clock. And now, of course, a redstone signal up here to power the dropper. Very nice. And we have room over here on this side. If we ever want to add in that item transport system we were talking about uh, with more hoppers or whatever, uh, in case we have some storage system or something where items are going to automatically, they can, the, the garbage items can come over here and be deleted. So let's go ahead and fill this back in. So I'm just going to place these blocks here and put the torch back here. And of course, you can't open a chest when there's a full block above it, right? So what we can do here is we can grab a stair block. So let's see, that was spruce, right? So I'm going to go ahead and place a stair block in. I mean, you could place it this way. You could place it uh, this way. Or what I prefer, placing it backwards like that. So it looks like a solid block. And of course, we can place our torch on the back of that stair, just like so. And now we have our waste disposal system. Uh, so let's test it out. Let's toss a couple items in, close it. And we can hear it activating and the items are gone. Let's quickly take a look. Not in the dropper, not in the hopper, not in the chest. They are gone, so it's fully functioning. Let's toss more items in and we can see it activate here. Very nice. So it's working. That is our waste disposal system fully functional. Now you have a place to toss all those extra seeds you get from this farm because I mean what else are you going to do with all those extra seeds right? It's not like there's any point in making a bigger farm when you've got this thing. So great uh, addition to the redstone bunker considering now you've probably if you've made this got a massive amount of extra seeds that you've just been tossing somewhere and uh, don't know what to do with. Now you can throw them away. Very nice. All right so I hope you liked this video. If you did please click that like button, subscribe, share this video with your friends. This is Black Belt Panda. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Oh, no!